Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm here with one more interesting topic on Kubernetes that is Kubernetes package management. So in the previous videos, we have learned a lot of other things about Kubernetes like Kubernetes pod, deployment, ingress, service, ingress control and a lot of other things, right? So now it's time for us to understand what is package management in Kubernetes. Okay, so we'll understand what is package management and along with that, we'll try to understand why we want to learn about Helm, why is it used, how is it used. We'll go through some sample Helm charts. We'll do some, uh, I mean, we'll learn some trips, tips and tricks and we'll look at some interview questions as well as materials. Okay, so without wasting any time, I'll quickly jump into the video because I don't want to make this video lengthy and, uh, you know, I want to keep it as crisp as possible and I want to make it as interesting as possible for you. Okay, now to start with, what is package management in Kubernetes? Okay, so forget Kubernetes and uh, put Kubernetes for, a, uh, I mean, aside for a while. Let's say you're working on your Windows machine or you have you're working on a Ubuntu or you installed a virtual machine from AWS, whatever it is, right? So if you want to install a package, what is the first thing that you would do? So you would simply go and you would search for that package if it is available to install using any of the package managers, right? So you either if let's say uh, you are on Ubuntu, you simply search for it using apt install or you know apt search or apt whatever the command that package manager provides right so once you do it your package is installed so if you're on centos you simply do hell uh, sorry yum install and if you're on ubuntu you simply do apt install or dnf install if you're on uh, fedro so basically a package manager is something that deals with the installation of a specific package now, why not you have the same concept for Kubernetes, right? Because even in Kubernetes, we do some mandatory installations, whether it is my Kubernetes cluster, whether it is your Kubernetes cluster, your organization Kubernetes cluster, everybody has some standard set of packages. Like let's take example of Prometheus. Let's take example of any monitoring setup or, uh, you know, logging, logging stack setup, like you have Elasticsearch or uh, ELK stack. So, these things are very common for all the organizations, right? So why everybody has to reinvent the wheel? Like why should everybody go and uh, download the Prometheus deployment.yaml file, service.yaml file, and all the other things? Instead, what if Prometheus provides an easy way to install Prometheus, right? So for that reasons, Kubernetes has come up with a concept or, you know, uh, there is a uh, evolution of a concept called package management in Kubernetes. So what happens with this package management is you can install all these mandatory setups using a simple package manager, which is either Helm or any other package managers that you want, that you would like to use. But one of the most widely used package managers is Helm. So why Helm is one of the most widely used because Helm is uh, backed up by a very good community, uh, which is Helm community. And it is also graduated to CNCF. CNCF is Cloud Native Computing Foundation. So everything related to Kubernetes, you know, uh, if you look at the uh, CNCF, like the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, they have very good resources. Or, you know, you can look at the CNCF projects, the projects that CNCF is working for the Kubernetes community. And all the projects that are backed by these uh, communities are, you know, uh, they have a very uh, strong uh, backbone of developers or uh, projects are very well tested. So, you know, you can simply understand that Helm is backed up by a very good community. And one more thing, the basic advantage of Helm over the other package managers is that Helm is very easy to learn. It's very easy to, easy to uh, use and it has a very good uh, documentation as well. So you, uh, to understand the architecture of Helm is also not complicated, which will anyways uh, do it in this video. So these are some of the advantages and Helm also supports upgrades as well as rollbacks. So let's say you have installed, if you go back to the previous slide, like I mentioned, like let's say you have installed Prometheus or let's say you have installed ELK stack using uh, Helm. Now you want to roll back or you want to upgrade the versions. So Helm also supports these things. So what did we understand till now? The major purpose of Helm is to support a package management that is let's say you want to do some mandatory installations so helm comes into picture and says that okay don't worry uh, either the organization like let's say prometheus or elk they can provide uh, helm charts or anybody from the community like let's say i 
uh, have done the Prometheus and ELK stack setup for my organization. Now I can say that, okay, why should everybody else bother uh, or why should everybody else suffer from the same pain? Like they have to find the deployment, they have to find the service, ingress and all the other things. I can simply, uh, what I will simply do is I'll create a Helm uh, chart for them and uh, I'll simply push this Helm chart to a repository and I'll say that everybody can use this by making very minute modifications, right? Like let's say they want to uh, change the port or let's say they want to change the, uh, you know, any uh, uh, fields in the config map or they want to override the default values like the names or any other things, right? So what I'll do is I'll create a chart and I'll provision this chart in such a way that anybody can make minor modifications and make the installation. So this is the beauty of Helm charts. So that's why Helm is the best way to find, share and use software built for Kubernetes, right? Just like we do for Ansible as well or just like we do for any other things. So you can today go into Ansible Galaxy and find for Ansible playbooks, right? So you find an Ansible playbook and uh, you can download that Ansible playbook, make some minor modifications and you can use that Ansible playbook. Similarly, you go to Docker Hub, you find uh, image related to Java, right? You use that as a base image and then you update uh, your base image for your installation. So the concept is similar in DevOps, right? So in Kubernetes, this concept is called package management. So all that information that I shared is just for example, but uh, like technically or, you know, uh, don't practically compare uh, Ansible Galaxy with Helm, but just for a reference, I have shared this information. Okay, now before we deep dive, you just need to understand three simple concepts related to Helm. That is, what is a Helm chat? What is a Helm repository? And what is a Helm release? So. Like I told you, Helm chart is nothing but a Helm package. Uh, so if I am working on Prometheus and uh, let's say that I am the one of the first persons to work on Prometheus installation. So what I can simply do is I'll create a bundle of all, all of these things or I'll create a folder of all of these things just for your understanding and uh, which has Helm, uh, Prometheus deployment, Prometheus service, Prometheus ingress and all the config maps related for the Prometheus installation. I'll put them in a folder or bundle and what I'll simply say is this is a Helm package. Now I'll push this Helm package to a repository where anybody can use uh, this Helm from this repository, right? It's just like a database. People can go there, search there, like Helm supports different repositories, which I'll talk going ahead, like uh, all the OCI compliant repositories, like open container initiative repositories, Helm do support them, uh, which, I'll, which I'll talk going ahead. But for now, just understand that somebody can create a Helm chart, like you create Docker images in Docker, and they can push uh, these Helm charts to the repository, like you push your Docker images to Docker Hub right and anybody in the world can use them by simply downloading and once you download on your kubernetes cluster helm creates something called as a release now why you have to have this release because you need to have an instance of this chart right so in docker uh, whenever you pull the docker image and you run it you have a docker container similarly in helm you have a docker uh, sorry helm release now what is the advantage of this helm release it's an instance of your helm uh, of anything like let's say i want to uh, install two my uh, M, uh, mysql uh, versions on my kubernetes cluster so what i can simply do like i mean like i told you i can download the mysql charts update the uh, uh, values related to the version and i can have two uh, uh, like you know mysql charts are uh, or you know uh, i can simply go to the uh, repository which has mysql uh, charts and uh, i can download for example mysql uh, version x and mysql version y uh, from this repository and then I'll have two different uh, versions of uh, MySQL on my Kubernetes cluster. So this is just an example. So in general, Helm installs charts into Kubernetes, creates a new release for each installation and you know, you can also find these charts like Helm provides an option called Helm search and using Helm search you can uh, uh, search for this uh, Helm charts over repositories. Like let's say you want to search in Artifact Hub. So Artifact Hub is one of the uh, registry repositories that Helm supports. So you can search in Artifact Hub or you can search in any other OCI complaint uh, registry that you want or repository that you want, okay? Now, we will see all of these things. We'll see the Helm commands. We'll see uh, like, you know, what are some of the most frequently used Helm commands. And uh, we'll also look at uh, how to push these uh, Helm charts into a repository. Now, this is uh, one of the, 
things that you don't have to remember uh, this is also available in helm uh, documentation but you need to understand that uh, let's say in your helm charts there are deployment files there are uh, service accounts there is a, a secrets file there is a config map but how does helm know which one to install first and which one to install next so what helm has done is it has defined its priority so helm says that I'll def I mean, I look for uh, the templates or I look for the uh, Kubernetes resource files in the specific order and I install in the specific order. Let's say you have a deployment and a service. So look at the order. Where is the deployment? So deployment should be somewhere here, right? So deployment is here. And after that, you also have service here. So what Helm does is it will install in the same order. It will first install a service and then it will install the deployment. So if you see here, it will first employ, uh, deploy a pod and then a deployment. So, so this is the order. Uh, finally, you have ingress and API service. So this is the order that Helm follows, and uh, in the same for, in the same order, Helm will deploy uh, the packages. So this can be an interview question for you. Now, like I told you, Helm supports uh, OCI registries. So this is slightly complicated. So I'll uh, come back to this one. Now, to quickly show you some of the uh, most commonly used uh, Helm questions. So what you can, uh, sorry, to quickly show you one of uh, some of the most commonly used uh, Helm commands, what you can simply do is come to this Helm documentation. So Helm has a wonderful documentation, which I'll share you in the description as well. So look for these Helm commands, right? There is a section called Helm commands. Just look for the Helm commands and for each of the Helm commands, you have a example, right? Let's say that I want to uh, create a Helm chart uh from the scratch okay so what you can simply do is you can use the helm create command okay once you use the helm create command it creates the following structure now let's discuss about this structure okay i have been uh, talking to you about helm charts i'm saying that you can bundle all of these files and i'm saying that you can overwrite these files but how exactly this happens so let's say you have an application called foo and you feel that this application foo is widely used or it can be reused in your organization or you want to uh, use within your development team say that uh, you want to install a specific version or you want to make minor modifications and install this so rather than everybody creating uh, these files manually you can create a helm chart like i told you now what happens when you use this helm create command so for the first time when you do this helm create it creates the following structure now in this structure the files that you have to focus mainly is firstly the templates. So inside the templates, you've put all of these files. Like I've been mentioning you, like the deployment file. Let's say, let's talk about a very simple application which has a deployment and a service. So what you do is under template, you put your deployment and you put your service. That's it. And inside the values.yaml, you provide all the values that you want to override in your deployment and service so that when I am installing, I can I can install it as Abhishek deployment. And when some other person is installing, they can install it as uh, XYZ deployment. And then you have the charts.yml, which provide the information about this chart. So it's kind of a metadata information, right? What is the name of this chart? Why is this chart used? What is the version of this chart? That's it. It just it just holds the metadata. And finally, you have the charts. So charts is nothing but you know if you if you have dependency with the other charts. So for now you can ignore it but uh, just understand that one chart can depend upon the other chart or you know you know you can include uh, uh, one chart into the other chart or you know you can uh, kind of the modules feature in terraform right so uh, similarly if you want to uh, if your chart depends upon the other charts you can simply put those uh, information inside this charts folder and finally you have uh, helm ignore uh, similar just like the git ignore you have any specific patterns for ignore you can do it and apart from all of these things you can also put some information like like readme file uh, if you want to provide uh, details about this or you can put uh, some licensing files uh, all of these things into your helm but this is a typical folder structure that helm creates when you use the helm create command now once you do that what is the simple thing that you do you put all of this information you update the values.yaml and all of the other things and then you can simply publish these helm charts or you can push these helm charts right and once you do that anybody can install helm using the helm install command so for now we cannot go through each and every of these things but uh, you know you can simply come here and look for the helm commands and one other advantage uh, with helm is that helm also provides you the linting feature like let's say uh, you are very new to go templating 
right what helm does is helm use the go templating language uh, so go templating is slightly difficult for somebody who is just starting with uh, you know you uh, follow some examples over the internet and you might find it difficult so what you can simply do is after you write uh, uh, some something like let's say you wrote some 10 lines or 15 lines you can simply come and uh, say helm lint and helm will tell you that okay you did something wrong here uh, it's a warning or error or whatever it is now so finally let's jump on to a uh, you know this is a repository that i want to talk to you uh, about so this is a uh, repository that i've taken from github uh, it's called azure samples so it's not related to azure anywhere but uh, you know this is a azure samples repository and you can fork this repository you can star this repository and you can look for the examples here so this is a repository that i was just finding for examples and i found it useful so you can also use this repository or any other repository from the internet or from the github but now let me deep dive and explain you. So let's take a very basic example called Hello World. So what these people are doing in Hello World is they are installing a very simple Hello World chat. And this Hello World has, you know, nothing but a uh, deployment and a service like the same example that we were talking about. Now, if you see what happened in this deployment file is you have not provided the name, but you said ACS Hello World followed by release dot name. Okay, then you said ACS hello world followed by dot release dot name. Okay, and here you have provided the service information as dot values dot service name. So how are these details getting populated? Like when I'm saying here dot values dot service now, what Helm does or what uh, your Helm chart does is it will look for these values in the values dot YAML. Like I mentioned to you, this is the Helm structure and there is some file called values dot YAML and Helm picks these values from the this service name and service step from the values.yaml. So what you can do is next time when you want to install this uh, Helm chart with your own information, let's say that uh, you are testing something or you're doing a proof of concept with respect to an application in Kubernetes. What you can do is that you can update these values.yaml. And in some scenarios, you have staging environment, you have development environment, you have production environment. So will you create uh, uh, these deployment and service files for each or every environment? You don't have to. What you can do is you can use a Helm chart and you can, you know, technically, strategically use your values.yaml to use a single chart for multiple environments. So that's the use case, right? So this is a very basic example. You can try out this example. And here there are steps that are provided. You can, you know, uh, you can use this uh, Helm install command to install these things. You can update the values.yaml. Uh, so values.yaml can be updated in two ways. So this is a default values.yaml, right? Uh, whatever information you provide here is taken by default, but you can also override these things using a command line argument. Right, Helm supports command line argument. Whenever you are doing Helm install, you can say Helm install minus F and you can pass your custom values.yaml. And by using this custom values.yaml, you can override the values.yaml. There is also another option for, uh, you know, hyphen hyphen set, but uh, better go for um, custom values.yaml. Okay, so this is about uh, Helm and uh, like I told you, there are a lot of examples here. Try out all of these example, like, you know, you can slightly complicate using uh, image pool secrets. You can understand how this image pool secrets is used, right? The same example, but in this case, what you are doing is we are using something called image pool secrets, right? The same deployment file, but this deployment file has an image pool secrets. So again, what they're doing is, uh, you know, they are picking this image pool secrets information from values.yaml. So here in this case, they have, increase the content of your values.yaml. So in the same way, you can also uh, extend your values.yaml, uh, you know, try out different examples with Helm. Helm is very easy. It's not at all complicated. Uh, if you do all of these examples, I think you will be a hero in, hero in Helm, right? There is nothing more, right? Uh, Helm is very simple, straightforward. You have a lot of good documentation. And now I'll come to interview questions. So one of the most commonly asked interview questions with respect to Helm is Helm 2 versus Helm 3. So now let's say you are a very uh, a new developer or let's say you just started with Helm version 3, then you don't have to worry about Helm 2. You can probably say that I am uh, very new to Helm. I just started learning using Helm 3. But if you have experience with Helm already and uh, you know, uh, then you need to understand the difference between Helm 2 and Helm 3. So the one of the major uh, difference between Helm 2 and Helm 3 is the structure itself. Like, you know, uh, Helm 2 was more of a uh, client and server architecture, whereas Helm 3 uh, removed the uh, server architecture because of some uh, security uh, issues. Like, you know, in Helm 2, you had 
had something called a stiller uh, and then uh, whenever you submit any request using the helm command line like i'm showing you here this request is received by the tiller and tiller takes care i mean tiller is deployed as a pod in your kubernetes cluster and it takes care of the installation but one of the major aspects is uh, the rbac uh, tiller has a lot of permission so you know uh, to overcome all of these problems uh, helm pre has removed tiller so this is one of the major things uh, major i mean there are other things as well you can read uh, the differences between helm 2 and helm 3 in the uh, uh, you know uh, helm documentation itself but this is one of the mostly uh, asked helm interview questions and if you want to learn more about the interview questions you know in one of my previous videos uh, the vi i'll i'll try to put that uh, information in the description again i did a video on uh, you know uh, free devops courses uh, how how do you uh, learn devops courses for free and uh, this is the repository that i talked about this is one of the wonderful repositories uh, where you have information about a lot of devops things so similarly come and search for helm here okay so you have interview questions or you have information about helm here so you can uh, use this information about helm and uh, you know you can learn a lot of content about helm uh, just give me a second i'll find out uh, the interview questions on helm for you in this repository right <clears throat> just a moment uh, yeah uh where did i miss it sorry i actually saved it but uh currently not able to find it okay so i'll put that link also in the description uh where you know uh, or just give me a second uh <clears throat> okay so my bad this information is actually present under kubernetes topic so i was looking for a topic called helm my bad but here you have questions like this like you know what is helm why do you need to um, explain helm charts explain the directory structure what is the uh, support for the release management and if you look at here uh, release management was only supported in uh, version 2 as helm in version 3 uh, this is removed uh, because of the security reasons and uh, you know you have a lot of interview questions on helm and kubernetes here so you can refer for uh, these here and you can also use this repository going back for uh, you know uh, trying out things on helm and uh, if you have any questions uh, don't hesitate to post that in the comment section i'll also look for like you know if you're not finding an example here i can also try out uh, some examples from the uh, helm artifact hub or any other oca complaint registry and i can uh, share that information with you so this is the video for today where uh, you know i have talked about helm so if you feel that i have missed some information about helm that is important or uh, if you have any questions related to my way of explanation or you know uh, if you feel that i can improve in some way uh, please don't uh, hesitate to comment i'll definitely take all of your uh, suggestions and feedbacks uh, very detailed and uh, i'll uh, try not to repeat those mistakes in the future videos and uh, finally if you have not subscribed to my channel uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel i'll come up with more exciting content and uh, do like share subscribe and comment on my videos thank you so much i'll see you in the next video take care bye